everybody, it is time now for my weekly picks for the second week of October. Before we review last week's picks, and trust me, I can wait a long time before I give you those results because it was not pretty for me or the five cent piece. And before we also uh, talk about the upcoming games uh, for this week, uh, again, had a fantastic time at the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, as you might know. We did a couple of shows uh, last week. If you haven't had a chance to check those out, please do. It was a lot of fun. Did the pick show in the post game of OU West Virginia. And by the way, got to stay at Westgate, which is home to the world's largest sports book. And trust me, it's a lot of fun. You can also check out the theater there and watch NFL, which my friends and I did that Sunday. I can tell you what, I picked better at the sports books and won a little bit of money. Picked better at the sports books than I did on the air with my college football picks last week. So, in a way, that's good because I won money, but in a way, it's bad because. Losing is never good no matter what facet, and I had my worst week ever on picks from a week ago. So what am I talking about? That's what I'm talking about. That's right. Numbers don't lie. Worst week I've ever had. Four and nine against the spread. Boy, did I bite it in a big way. What happened? The Big Ten and the Pac-12 is what happened. Didn't win a single game in either conference. The SEC, I did well, went two and one, and then the Big 12, I uh, went two and two. But uh, Big Ten Pac-12 costed me, as did the Notre Dame-Clemson game, as did the military game between Air Force and Navy. So I really took the Nest Team plunge, and the coin was even worse at 3-10. and 10. So as you can tell, we are dead even. That's right. We are tied with plenty of weeks to go. So we'll see what happens. Plenty of time to get my record above 500. All right, everybody, let's begin the picks for this week. Uh, OU Texas, as always, for my OU pick, make sure you check out the weekly matchup show. Other Big Ten action, Oklahoma State at West Virginia. Now the season gets serious for the Cowboys. They're still undefeated, despite the fact that there's no more Ryan Simmons. And, by the way, their ground game still really hasn't shown up yet. But I think they can cover the spread, which right now is at 6.5 in favor of the Mountaineers. You know, West Virginia got a little bit beat up last week against the Sooners, losing by 20, and Carl Joseph is out. They're all everything safety. Their team leader not going to be playing. So, boy, that's a big, big help for the Cowboys. I think they will keep it within the six and a half. I think they'll have some passing success against the Mountaineers. They'll need running success to win. But I think because of the injuries, I think Oklahoma State's going to have a shot at least covering. So give me Oklahoma State plus the six and a half. And if the coin lands on heads, it's going to take the favorite underdog. It likes the underdog. And here is the nickel. It's going to take West Virginia. Now, Baylor at Kansas. Wow, this is the game of the year. That is, if you're looking for a team to try to cover a big point spread, it's the game of the year. It's not going to be a contest on the field. Uh, I don't know what time the game starts, but the game will be over probably 20 minutes after kickoff. Biggest question is, does Baylor cover? It's 45 points. That's a ton. But they're playing Kansas. It's in Lawrence. Don't care. Baylor should cover the spread. So give me Baylor minus the 45. And the coin is going to uh, take Baylor as well. Iowa State at Texas Tech. Cyclones coming off a win. But it was against Kansas. And, you know, Texas Tech has just come off back-to-back -back weeks against arguably the two best teams in the Big 12. It's TCU and Baylor. So a bit of a reprieve, if you will. As they come back home and they'll play Iowa State, and I think Texas Tech's passing attack will be too much in this one. Look for Tech to put a lot of points on the board. Give me the Red Raiders minus the 11 points, and they've done pretty well against Iowa State in recent years as well. So give me uh, you know Texas Tech minus the 11, and the coin is going to take Iowa State. TCU at Kansas State, one of the trickiest games of the week nationwide, and by far the trickiest game to really break down in terms of the Big 12. It's a night game. It's in Manhattan. You know, it's hard to bet against uh, the old guy there at Manhattan, one of the best coaches of all time in Bill Snyder. But this TCU team is loaded and defensively coming off a strong performance against Texas a week ago. It's going to be close for a while, but fourth quarter, too much Boinkin, you know, too much Doxon. It's going to be too much TCU in the end. So give me TCU minus the 10. And the coin is going to go. Give it one more flip here. And it's going to take TCU, too. Now let's go on to some national games. Arkansas at Alabama. Hey, the Razorbacks surprised me. They got a win, a tough place to win. That's Tennessee. While Bama might have had the most impressive performance of the week, stomping Georgia in Athens. Between the hedges, 
But I think Arkansas might have found some confidence in a week ago. You got to remember the Razorbacks have, have lost some some heartache games along the way. So so look for Arkansas. You know maybe catching Alabama off an emotional win. Bama is going to win this game. May win it by double digits, but sixteen. Too many against the Arkansas team uh, that can play physical. So give me Arkansas plus the 16, and the coin is going to take Alabama. Now you have Georgia at Tennessee. This is a tough game to pick because it's such a small point margin, and Tennessee's been a big disappointment. Three losses already, and Georgia, they historically have not done well in recent seasons. The Bulldogs, I know, got humiliated last week at home. But I look for the Bulldogs to show that they are uh, the, the best team in the SEC East. So I think Georgia can, um, I think they're capable of handling that three-point spread. And Tennessee is still trying to find a way uh, to play better ball in the second half of a game. And for the most part, that hasn't been the case. So give me Georgia minus the three. And the coin in this case is going to take, it's going to take Tennessee. Florida at Missouri. The Gators, one of the surprises in football this year because they're undefeated and they just put a serious butt whooping on Ole Miss, who looked like a college football playoff contender. Ole Miss pretty much out of the picture now. And the Gators uh, trying to be a challenger in the SEC East. And I know that emotional letdown is the easiest phrase to put in this case when you're playing on the road the following week and it's going to be hard to get jacked up for Missouri. But the Tigers have not been really lighting anybody up offensively. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, but in the end, I think Florida is going to prevail. So give me the Gators minus the four in this case. Give me Florida minus four, and the coin is going to go with Missouri. Going to the Big Ten, Northwestern at Michigan. Wow, pair of uh, Big Ten contenders already. You're talking about Michigan State and Ohio State being a part of the party in Iowa. Well, you know what? Northwestern and Michigan, you know, they want to get involved in being taken seriously in the Big Ten. This is a big, big game in continuing that. And Michigan, they've been on a roll since losing to Utah. Look like a completely different team. Their defense has pulled out back-to-back shutouts. But Northwestern has been one of the surprise teams. And I think this is going to be a low-scoring game. And a low-scoring game is when the margin is a touchdown or better. I like the underdog to at least cover. Michigan probably wins, but by a razor-thin margin, that means give me Northwestern plus the seven points. And the nickel is going to take after a good, good flip here. That's a bad flip. There's a good flip for you. It's going to take, um, it's going to take Northwestern, too. Illinois at Iowa. Again, same proverb. Both teams playing good defense right now. Iowa Winning at Wisconsin last week to remain undefeated. Illinois stunning Nebraska in the final minute of that game with the West Lunt touchdown in the final few seconds. You know, Iowa at home, I like them to win, but double-digit favorite with two defenses that can play. Yeah, I'm going to take Illinois to cover. So give me the Illini plus the 10.5. And, and the uh, nickel in this case really, really likes Illinois too. And you got Cal at Utah. This right here is a highlight game. Who would have thought at the beginning of the year that this was going to be one of those games that ESPN would be glued in on? College game day, by the way, is in Salt Lake, Utah for this one. And both teams on the undefeated side. Cal's got a terrific quarterback and an offense that can move. But right now, Utah seems like the more complete, balanced team on both sides of the ball. Plus, playing at home, I think that'll matter too. So give me Utah minus seven and a half. And the coin, as we flip it really, really solidly here, if I can hold on to it. Okay, one more time. Flip it good. There we go. And it's going to take Utah as well. Navy at Notre Dame. Boy, what a heartbreaking loss for the Irish last week. Missing the two-point conversion with a chance to tie the end and having a costly fumble deep in Clemson territory prior to that. Lost by two. 14-point favorites at home against Navy. Think about a game like this where you have a Navy team that, as always, is going to run wishbone. That means that they are going to sell them past. That means they're going to take a lot of time off the clock. And Navy has been known to play Notre Dame tough from time to time. Even though the game's with South Bend, I think Notre Dame, despite the fact that I think they'll win, I think two touchdowns might be too big of a margin. So give me Notre Dame um, to not cover in this game. I like Navy plus the 14, and the coin is going to go with Navy too. You have Miami at Florida State. Man, when I was growing up, when I was watching football in high school and in college, this was the matchup nationwide in college football. This was the big one. Not so much anymore. 
And the game ball will still be in prime time on national TV, ABC, for a um, 7 o'clock Oklahoma time kickoff. Florida State, I think, wins. But offensively, they haven't really impressed me a whole heck of a lot. And I think Miami uh, getting 8.5 points, I think they'll cover the spread. So give me Miami plus the 8.5. And, and the coin is going to take, it's going to take, uh, looks like Miami too. And a few more games to break down before we wrap it up. Georgia Tech at Clemson. And I know it's easy to think that Clemson is going to overlook Georgia Tech after what happened last week. You know, with emotional win and the bad weather at home. Now Clemson getting a high ranking. It's easy to see that maybe it's an emotional letdown week. But I don't think so. I think Dabo Swinney will have his team focused enough to where they'll have enough to not only beat Georgia Tech, but to cover that seven-point spread. So far, the Yellow Jackets have not been uh, that impressive so far. So give me Clemson at home, minus the seven. And the coin, by the way, is going to take um, Clemson as well. Two more games. You have Michigan State at Rutgers, and can the Spartans cover a spread? That's the question I've got right now. It was a push against Oregon, and lately they have not looked great. And last week, lucky to get out uh, at home against Purdue with a win after nearly blowing a huge lead in the game. But I think Michigan State plays more of a complete game this time. They're playing Rutgers. I think the Spartans will um Look impressive, and I think they'll win easily by at least two touchdowns. Give me the Spartans, minus 13.5, and, and the coin is going to go with Rutgers. Finally, you have Wisconsin at Nebraska. Two teams that last week you probably say should have won. You know, but, but here's the thing, though, okay? Nebraska was leading late in that game at Illinois under minutes ago. Throwing a pass on third down was incomplete. Stop the clock. Otherwise, they could have run another 35 seconds off the clock. And I don't think Illinois would have had enough time to mount a game-winning drive. So that was coaching right there. That could be corrected. Wisconsin, in the meantime, it was just pure lack of execution. Dropping passes and Stave looked terrible, especially in that fourth quarter. And that was a reason, big reason why they lost that heartbreaker to the Hawkeyes. So I think Nebraska at home, I liked them at the beginning of the year to beat Nebraska. Uh, for Nebraska to beat Wisconsin, and I've not at all swayed in that capacity. So give me Nebraska with a close uh, point spread of one and a half. So give me Nebraska, give me the one and a half, and the coin is going to go on the side of Nebraska too. So those are my picks for this week. What were yours? Don't forget OU Texas post game. I'll have that sometime Saturday evening, maybe even earlier than that, just depending on how things work out. Thanks for joining, and hopefully. We'll do better on this week's picks than I did last week. Take care, everybody.